Hello and good morning everyone. I hope all are keeping safe and healthy and I wish everyone a very happy Diwali and a prosperous new year. On behalf of Blackbird Limited, I welcome everyone to our Q2 and H1 FY24 earnings call. On the call, I'm joined by Deepak Bansal, Executive Director and Global CFO and SGA, our Investor Relations Advisors. We have uploaded our results, presentations, on the exchanges, and I hope everybody had an opportunity to go through the same. We are happy to meet again. I'll start with a brief overview on the company, followed by business and financial performance for quarter two and H1 FY24. Black Box stands as a prominent global ICT solution provider, having expertise in designing, deploying, and managing digital infrastructure for our global enterprise customers and fortune customers, including cloud providers. With our expertise of more than four decades now, businesses have the capability to create and deliver technological solutions and services that align with their essential business objectives. We have established ourselves as a trusted and strategic partner in IT solutions and services, expediting business transformation and strengthening the foundational elements of digital infrastructure, such as network, customer experience, connectivity, and more. Our global strategy is based on the principle of think global and act local, which enables us to maintain relationships with our global perspective. Simultaneously, it allows us to stay relevant by providing flexibility to our customers to cost-effectively deliver in 35 countries including operations from our center of excellence in India. We're delighted with our Q2 and H1 FY24 results, showcasing a significant enhancement in EBITDA margins and overall profitability. This positive outcome is attributed to our cost rationalization program and improved productivity yields. The strong performance was on the back of consistent increase in the order book the project's backlog for North America has been on a continuous uptrend. Just to highlight, on an order backlog for North America, as of September 21, the order was at $100 million, which increased to $144 million in September 22, further to $209 million in March 23, and as of September 23, our order backlog increased to $233 million. We have reported robust deal wins in the excess of $80 million during the quarter compared to deal wins of around $30 million in the same period last year. We have seen a strong traction across our business areas with significant contribution from in-building 5G on-go solutions, digital workplace, audio-video, on-demand solutions, enterprise networking, connected building, and data center. The data center markets Driven by the impact of hyperscale and cloud providers, we expected to witness significant growth in the foreseeable future. We expect we are well equipped to seize the opportunities. Currently, we take pride in serving three of the five major hyperscalers along with esteemed clients in the cloud and social media enterprise sectors. Our m and strategy, as you are well aware, is to acquire and scale methodology has worked out well for us and we remain committed to exploring favorable acquisition opportunities that align with the strategic goal of identifying businesses that offer growth potential having suboptimal margin profile. These prospective acquisitions should synergize effectively with the existing operations, enabling us to attract new customers, enhance current business initiatives, support expansion into untapped geographic regions, and foster the development of new capabilities thereby helping us to turn around the business quickly and bring short-term synergy. So overall, just to summarize, we have seen consistent growth in order book and deal wins despite the difficult economic environment. It is a testimony of the strength of our business model. We are optimistic that we continue to see the same momentum in the coming quarters, helping us boost our confidence to achieve our stated guidance for fiscal 24. That is it from my side. I now hand over the call to Deepak to run through the financial highlights. Thank you, Sanjeev. 
for the detailed overview good morning everybody and i wish everyone very happy diwali and prosperous new year i will now discuss our financial performance for quarter 2 and h1 fy24 we are delighted to report best half yearly performance across all our business parameters on a half yearly basis revenues for h1 fy24 witnessed a growth of 7% year on year to inr 3146 crores from inr 2934 crores in h1 fy23 quarter 2 of fy24 revenues stood at inr 1574 crores which was flat when compared to quarter 1 of fy24 and quarter 2 of fy23 we have witnessed a few delays at customer sites leading to flattish growth on a quarterly basis also during the quarter we have started exiting some of the low revenue customers who do not have future growth potential and were drag on margins thereby improving our customer profile if we look at ebitda we are happy to report a robust 85% growth year on year to inr 190 crores in first half of fy24 as compared to inr 103 crores in first half of fy23 talking on quarterly performance our quarter 2 fy24 ebitda increased to inr 101 crores which is up 13% sequentially and more than double compared to quarter 2 fy23 ebitda of inr 50 crores ebitda margins have also performed significantly well for h1 of fy24 our ebitda margins increased by 260 basis points year on year to 6.1% quarter 2 of fy24 saw ebitda margins elevated to 6.4% increase of 320 basis points year on year and 70 basis points on quarter on quarter basis we continue to see an uptrend in margins since quarter 2 of fy23 we believe our focus on cost rationalization and improved productivity has started to yield positive results thereby increasing our ebitda margins coming to net profit which is profit after tax uh, first half of fy24 profit after tax increased to a robust inr 56 crores as compared to loss of 7 crores in first half of fy23 looking after quarterly performance profit after tax for quarter 2 of fy24 increased to inr 32 crores compared to negative of 23 crores in quarter 2 of fy23 sequentially our profit after tax is up by 33% our strong focus on profitability over the last few quarters has started yielding positive results and we are confident that this improvement trajectory should continue in the future as well earnings per share we have seen a substantial increase to inr 3 rupees 33 paisa per share in h1 of fy24 versus negative of 43 paisa per share in h1 of fy23 for quarter 2 of fy24 eps increased to inr 1 rupees 90 paisa per share versus negative of 1 rupees 36 paisa per share in quarter 2 of fy23 and inr 1 rupees 43 paisa per share in quarter 1 of fy23 as highlighted by sanjeev earlier our order book continues to remain strong reflected in new order wins this coupled with its strong traction across our business areas is helping us stay firm on our medium term targets for fiscal year 24 that's all from my side uh, i will now request sanjeev to join me for q and a thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session the first question is from the line of deep shah from bnk securities please go ahead Hello, good morning uh, so thank you for the opportunity uh, uh, my first question was uh, on the comment that you gave that there have been few delays on customer side uh, and you exited low revenue customers 
So to pass to this question, uh, if you could elaborate a bit on, you know, what are the nature of these delays and uh, given how the macro environment is, do you think that this is not really transient? It will go on for, say, say a year or a year and a half, or, or you think it will turn around pretty soon? The second part of this question would be, we, we have a lot of about 2,000 plus customers with, say, revenues less than 5 crores. So, when you say we're getting low revenue customers, where, what is the, uh, you know, the thought process you have that, you know, how much do we want to rationalize uh, our customer base and, and what would be a sweet spot for us to be? So, so that's the first question. Uh, I'll come back for, for more. Thanks for the question. Uh, I think, uh, so I'll answer in two parts. On the first part with respect to uh, delays uh, with respect to customers, I think we are uh, a, a reasonable part of our business of projects uh, which are dependent upon uh, customer readiness of site, including uh, vendor supplies to support their projects. And uh, more specifically, in, in the data center space, we work very closely with other ecosystem partners. It could be uh, on the construction side, or it could be on the electrical or power side, who also build the data center when the greenfield is going on. So we have to work in tandem to be able to see that our te technical work or IT work is worked alongside some of the ecosystem partners. And therefore, a readiness of a site is important for us to be able to uh, move our projects further. Uh, we have seen some uh, challenges and delays. I don't expect that to be a longer term. Uh, with respect to or having it occurring uh, often. But in a project, we, it is dependent upon certain ecosystem partners, be it a technology supply vendor, be it other ecosystem vendor. And from a services standpoint, we have to work in tandem with that. So customer site business for a project is important. In general, of course, there is a softness in the IT space in general. But I, I consider our overall uh, specific business to be a large portion to be non-decisionary, we're not expecting a significant uh, uh, matter for us to be affected, but we are cautious, and we're taking measures to see that we are able to burn our backlog, which remains very, very strong, to be able to deliver the required revenue that we are looking for. The second part of the question with respect to uh, uh, customers and our uh, you know, direction to assess I think it's a normal business process. I think we definitely want our yield from our customers to be high. As we move forward to grow our business into a high trajectory, it's important to assess our focus on our customers. We would not be able to deliver quality and delight our customers if we do not uh, focus and see the yield we get from our customers. To that extent, we are currently assessing customers over the last three years period assessing the yield from those customers and possibility of what we can do. And this is a, uh, we are taking measures to ensure that we take prudent measures that we do not see a possibility or we see uh, very small customers and the possibility is not high. To take a measure to either increase our prices to be to get the better yield or so we are not able to handle that, we want to exit those customers. We do not expect that to be a large drag uh, on our revenues. Uh, it might be mild. In fact, it would be a positive uh, impact to our margins, uh, gross margins of profitability going forward. That assessment is going on at this time. And as we make progress, I think we'll, uh, you know, we will take uh, optimum measures to uh, gravitate towards high yield customers, high value customers. And if we do not see prospects from long tail, we will take appropriate measures to see that we are able to either increase our value to the customers, or if not, we will exit those customers. Uh, right, right. So thanks, thanks for that for that detailed answer. So if I can just add a follow-up here. So, um, you know, when I see that our 525 crore custom base, we have some 110 plus. Uh, so is there any specific business line where, you know, a lot of these uh, sub-5 crore customers are present or, or they are scattered across? And uh, generally speaking, is there a thought process that, uh, certain business clients we want to focus more and therefore we'll keep those customers even if they're small to scale them up uh, or, or is it really uh, across all our businesses? It, it's, it's very vertical agnostic. No, I think we're taking a approach of trying to cost to serve the customer. It is not about the certain verticals. Uh, we are looking at measures to 
optimally serve a customer, we can serve a customer locally. We are serve a customer globally from the center of excellence. So size is one part. I, I, was, I was talking about yield from the customer. So if the yield from the customer is our cost to serve and therefore our profitability. Uh, as the number of transactions we do the customer. And there are various ways to do that, right? We can also do it from a low-cost geography in India. And if that works out, we would uh, get better yield and therefore there's no need to it. But if you have a very highly local job, two million transactions and we make $50,000 a year, uh, that's the position we take as to what the cost of service is high. So it's not a specific type of uh, customer or a specific type of a services. It's in general taking a view of potential with the customer. Uh, we want to do uh, more with less, right? We want to focus and delight some of our largest customers that we serve. Uh, all customers are important, but I think more important is yield from our customers and potential for the customers in the next two, three years' time. So we are going through a scientific process. If we can serve it from uh, from a low-cost perspective, uh, then we would not exit the customer. We are looking at yield from a customer as to what uh, margin uh, we earn from the customer world the potential is going forward. Right, right. So thank you so much. So the second question would be actually on, say, uh, the deployment of cash or debt or acquisition. So it's I think it's becoming more clear now that interest rates or elevated interest rates are here to stay for some time. Any change in which we are thinking about, say, acquisitions or, or therefore resultant debt uh, or debt reduction, you know, the entire uh, area, then anything that we've changed or we still will look out for acquisitions and uh, the idea to repay some debt in FY25, because we should ideally generate some cash in F25, that remains as it is. Any any further on this would be really useful. Yeah. So I think our stated position has been, and uh, I will defer the question of debt to deeper, but let me complete the, our uh, strategy and acquisition. So I've stated before that uh, we follow strictly uh, our, uh, our economic goals for acquisition. We are not emotional about economics, right? So we will not be acquiring because we just want to acquire to scale. Uh, we will we will. Uh, See if it's accretive in the short term, as I quoted in my call. We look at short term synergies. Uh, it should make sense for us because uh, use of cash, uh, appropriate use of cash is extremely important for us, right? So we will be uh, looking at acquisitions to grow. Uh, we will not just randomly wanting to acquire. We are a value uh, buyer. Uh, we want it to be accretive in the short term. We look at whether we can make it synergistic. Uh, we are looking at suboptimal. Uh, margin profile for us to aggregate and make it margin accretive uh, for us and our shareholders. So, therefore, that remains the thesis. With respect to cost of interest and debt, I will defer to my Google CEO for Deepak yeah. to respond. Deepak? Yeah. So, so, so yeah, uh, deep, uh, our, uh, let's say, the borrowing stands at around 375 crores and with a cash in the hand of around 200 crores, our net debt, net debt stands at 175 crores. And if you, if you look at our EBITDA uh, of the first half, which is around 190 crores, we are right now, our debt, uh, our net debt is, is let's say, a 0.5x or something of our, let's say, yearly EBITDA. If I if I just uh, let's say uh, on a on a conservative basis, if I just multiply by two also my beta, then I am I am trading at almost like 0.5x of this thing on the overall debt. So so uh, so I think yes, that cost we don't see that the cost of the debt will go down sooner, and that is an uncontrollable item from our perspective uh, because if the Fed starts reducing the rates, uh, like now today a lot of reports have come that the including UBS and Citibank that in, in 24, 2024, people are expecting between 200 bips to 250 bips of reduction. But that, again, not in our control. If that reduction comes in, that will directly flow to the PNL. But as of now, at least we are not expecting any increase and we are not expecting, let's say, uh, unless otherwise, like what Sanjeev told, that we really acquire the assets which are value accretive to us, uh, then only our debt will go up. So anyway, from the overall basis, that, that asset will be value accretive. So that so the so the cost of the debt will be will not be let's say very very high uh, in terms of the overall value accretion in terms of EBITDA and revenues. Uh, under, under, uh, I I join back uh, with you if anything else. Thanks thanks for you thanks for you but and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to join the question queue, please press star and one now.
The next question is from the line of Jigar Shah from AK Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I have a couple of questions. So, firstly, can you throw some light on the inorganic business opportunities? Have we identified any new areas of business or would we like to excel in, in the same areas of business which we currently operate in? Thank you for the question. So, we will, uh, I think, our areas of business, as uh, we have uh, said before, is uh, focused around business infrastructure. That includes connectivity, networking, modern digital workplace, cybersecurity, and managed services, right? And I think we will continue to focus on those areas. We believe the potential in that area for building this infrastructure over the next several years is immense because the next generation of applications, AI, machine language, chat GPT, from connected cars to cancer cure will be driven on this digital infrastructure. So we are in good spot there, right? And with respect to Acquisitions, we have not uh, currently have nothing to comment with respect to spiking, something that uh, I can comment on. But we are opportunistic and will follow our thesis of being economically accredited to us and shareholders. Um, uh, we are uh, economic and prudent buyers. So, as we have said, we'll continue to see whether it, it bakes in well into our program so that we do not uh, overload our debt, uh, we do not uh, you know, stress our business. Uh, we want to continue to focus on profitable growth. And if that makes sense, uh, we will pursue. Uh, otherwise, I think uh, we will uh, drive our organic growth. Correct. Got it, sir. That was very clear. Uh, secondly, we have seen a good improvement on the margins front. Uh, we are seeing an improvement trend since last couple of quarters. So, do we expect this to continue for the rest the second half of the year? Also, if you could highlight additional steps which we are planning to improve on this margins further. Yeah, so I think uh, operational excellence uh, is a journey. Uh, it is a matter of continuous improvement. Uh, we definitely want to uh, continue on the journey of excellence and continue to uh, you know, improve and strengthen our margin position both on the growth margin side and operating income side, so that we can do that. We expect our margins uh, from those to operating to net improve uh, over the next couple of quarters for sure, right? And we are focused on that. That would come through increased scale. That would come through our uh, use of maturity of our systems and processes that we have deployed over the last couple of years. That will also be, uh, be coming through maturity of our center of excellence that we now have in Bangalore. So if you look at a combination of uh, continuous improvement across our mature delivery models both locally and globally, our effective use of tools and processes that we have deployed over the last couple of years, and our uh, focus on selling better uh, with respect to our customers and getting better deals, a combination of that, I feel confident that we should be able to, to continuously improve our margin levels going forward. Got it, sir. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. Just a reminder to all the participants, if you wish to join the question queue, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of uh, Jyoti Singh from Arihan Capital Markets Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. I'm Congress from the uh, decent setup number. My question on the CapEx side, if you can guide us on that front, and another on the capacity utilization. Sorry, uh, your Sorry. first question is on the on the CapEx? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, so, so you know, our business is a low CapEx business, uh, and uh, and our business requires a capex primarily related to let's say the hardware and uh, and uh, uh, and and mostly the let's say the long term software if we buy something in terms of the applications or something or maybe the new offices or the warehouse and all those stuff so our capex is going to be in the range of between let's say two and a half to three and a half million dollar every year uh, that's what our capex range is for the year so we are we are low on the asset because it is more like a customer delivery. We don't we don't have let's say a delivery model where we where we capitalize uh, let's say the assets and then deliver to the customer. It is mostly enabling the business type of capitalization. Uh, so that's on the capex. Uh, second question, uh, uh, Sanjeev, actually I missed it. Uh, what is the second question? 
only capacity utilization side sir like earlier we were approx 80% so we are on the same level or uh, any changes on that side with respect to your capacity yeah. utilization no no capacity yeah. utilization so basically you are talking about you are talking about efficiency of our technicians on the ground in terms of their utilization yeah i'll take that okay so i think i think uh, in general uh, we we uh, run a pretty lean uh, organization with respect to uh, our forecasting of our resources uh, we currently operate at a capacity utilization northward of 80% a capacity utilization of 85% is considered to be uh, optimum and uh, the best so we do have uh, some improvement to be done there considering our also resources uh in bangalore that we have at uh, which is a low cost geography we do need to create a little bit uh, capacity uh, you know uh, availability there to be able to address our customers so i think we are we are uh, utilizing our capacity efficiently we do have some room and we as we mature i think we should be able to hit more towards 85% capacity utilization from our resource perspective but having said that i think i think which the time our cost based on our revenue so therefore we do not need to be creating a large uh, bench of pool of people uh, we have a 5% to 7% kind of a space to, to address our growth so there is a, a scope to improve that but i think we have to be optimal with respect to our capacity uh, capacity thank you so much sir and sir my another question is on the um, america market side that earlier uh, we discussed about that uh, the strategic shift aim to drive uh, the double digit uh, figure in the near term so if you can update on that if i miss so, so i think i think we we are as i said uh, we are in the digital infrastructure space we expect uh, you know a large portion of this trend remains uh, non discretionary we still see a strong momentum in our project or the book more specific to connectivity and our data center projects we expect uh, the momentum to pick up in our cyber security as well so i think across our business line i think we uh, remain confident to be able to uh, gain growth uh, and said that i think we are also as i said cognizant with respect to a larger economic situation a little bit of softness on the it services side but i think for now i think our order backlog our current pipeline I give us confidence that we are expected to uh, keep our growth momentum going. Okay, thank you, sir. Great. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of G1 Patwa from Sahar Sir Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, Sanjeev, there is only uh, one question. So this quarter we have got some severance cost. So uh, how long you think the severance cost will come? For how many quarters more? I think uh, I think we will have I think this quarter the severance cost to remember correctly and data in front about uh, the non cross I believe uh, uh, so I we do not do not expect the severance cost to remain high going forward but we will do have some severance cost as we start to uh, more mature or offshore I think uh, there is still some room to be able to reconstruct we are still winding down some of our legacy ERP systems uh, we are down to two or three systems now. and once we are able to do that we should be able to sit down on a single platform and therefore some uh, cost optimization will happen we can take those kind of work from our shared services center in bangalore so we expect at least over the next couple of quarters to have some amount of service to continue okay so next year we will not have uh, so by end of this march i can see that we will have everything streamlined i think over the next couple of quarters we have been done with a with a significant portion some portion of seven and five continue as a part of our excellence program and continuous improvement but a reasonable part over the next two three quarters to possibly wind down perfect thanks a lot thank you participants who wish to join the question queue please press star and 1 at this time the next question is from the line of uh, vivek Charoria, who is an individual investor, please go ahead. Hi, hi, Sanjeev and Deepak. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Sanjeev, could you share a more broader two to three year outlook as to where we want our margins to be and our top line? I mean, right now we are at six, six and a half percent. 
and uh, most of the bigger industry players operate any uh, anywhere between 10 to 12 percent so are we reasonably confident that we will get there and beyond that we really want to re reinvest uh, some of that into uh, into making sure that our top line goes up so at first should we expect our margins to go up and then we and then we reinvest into uh, uh, you know for a higher top line growth yeah, so thanks Vivek for the question. So the answer is yes. I think uh, we have said it before. I think we are over the next uh, uh, several quarters we intend to improve our operating margins, right? Uh, and uh, heading towards more towards eight, nine, and ten percent goals. I think that's what our objectives are for the next three years' time. We do expect to be exiting upward of nine to ten percent. And I think uh, with scale, uh, we believe that uh, is a possibility uh, for sure. Uh, whether we can do much better than that, uh, time will tell. But for now, over the next two to three years' time, we expect to move from six and a half. I think we expect to exit this year, uh, not quite a seven percent or more, seven and a half. And therefore, I think we expect over the next couple of years to be able to go to ten percent. Uh, and do we have any like you guys had a like an internal strategy session? Are you able to share some of the insights that you have in terms of? I'm just trying to understand from an internal perspective what 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 sort of targets do we have as to where our as to where we want our company to be in terms of uh, scale and you know prof and profitability. Because if you look at the past three four years. We've been stuck in this 300 to 200 crore EBITDA range. I mean, should we break out of that starting next year and uh, back to a higher trajectory? Our peak EBITDA has been about 350 crores in March 21. Uh, and that has been the case for the past three to four years. So should we expect starting now in the next few quarters to be like an inflection point for us and our, our number should only improve? So I think uh, I think I'll be, I think we have already provided that kind of uh, our expectation uh, for the year with respect to revenue, uh, EBITDA, and uh, uh, net operating income back. And I think uh, although we have a little bit of a softness on the revenue side, as you can see in quarter two, although we expect to uh, uh, reasonably catch up over the next couple of quarters with growth, uh, we are uh, confident of our guidance pertaining to this year's. To be the target, which is uh, not for the 400 cross or 450 cross. We are also confident of our uh, guidance given for PAT, not for the 140 to 170 range. So I think that we have that. So currently we are assessing our businesses. We'll continue to uh, focus on growth. And I think at the right time we'll provide the guidance for next year and year beyond. Uh, our current focus is to see drive a mid double digit growth at least going forward. But I think uh, as we get into quarter three and uh, Quarter four, when I have an earnings call, we have a better view of the current year uh, with respect to uh, where the goals were and where we, uh, where we will land. And at the right time, we will also provide guidance going forward of fiscal 25 and beyond. Thank you so much, Thank you. Thank you. Before we take our next question, a reminder to all participants, if you wish to join question queue, please press star and one at this moment. The next question is from the line of Preeti Mehta from Mehta Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Good morning. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. So last quarter we have highlighted that our cybersecurity business is gaining traction, good traction. So this quarter also we have added close to 15 clients and a fortune client. So how would we look at this business vertically contributing to our top line in this financial year? Thank you, Dee. I think, uh, I think cybersecurity has been uh, a new initiative for us, as you know. It was incubated about uh, 18 months back. Uh, we have spent time. It's a very highly skilled um, and highly platform-centric business. So we have focused for the last year or so in building our capability, both from a, a security operating center that we built in America and, of course, a couple of centers in Bangalore and Mumbai, and the focus on hiring high quality talent, uh, the results of, and getting, uh, you know, a, a solid footprint. When you've started to see that, as we reported earlier on for the quarter, we added on, uh, 15 or more than 15 odd customers in that. Although it's a small part of our overall revenue profile, uh, I call it, uh, but it's very, very important from value perspective. It's also very picky with respect to adding our, uh, to our, uh, portfolio and to service our customers. So what we are seeing is uh, many integrated deals that we are doing within connectivity and the network. We are able to attach 
cyber security within that, and that momentum will uh, grow in the coming years. And so, therefore, I think we expect that to, uh, volume for business to grow and also enable us to have more brand permission, to have more better conversation with our customers and to build their network. It's important to secure that. So, it's a good efficiency. It's a highly skilled business. It's a very, very, uh, you know, uh, technology-dependent and changing business to keep pace. Uh, so, we're focused on creating uh, the right partnership, having the capability. We have a good platform now. And we expect to grow that significantly, although it may not be very large compared to our current revenue goals. But from a value perspective, it's also an attach that allows us to grow our networking connectivity business. So there would be significant growth. Uh, but in the overall scheme of things, I think it still remains really small, but very important part of our plan as we write our next year journey. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. And uh, so one more question. Sequentially, that our top line remained flat this year. Uh, this quarter. So, are we still seeing the impact decline in TPS business, which we highlighted last quarter? And if you can throw some insights on what all steps have we taken to get the TPS business back to growth track? Yes, I think the, our, uh, our revenues have been flat for this quarter. We expect uh, to change that trajectory in the coming quarter, point number one, uh, across both our uh, services business and our product business. So, we expect that uh, to change. We had a uh, points in time difficulty in this quarter, which I think the uh, has alluded to. Uh, with respect to our product business, I think we have taken measures for introduction of new products, getting uh, our go-to-market aligned. And I think it's coming back from a flat a perspective to a growth momentum also in the product business. And that will be seen in the coming quarters as we move forward. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. I'd like to thank everyone for joining the call. I hope you have been able to address all your queries. For any further information, kindly get in touch with me, Deepak, or our strategic growth advisors, our investor listening advisors. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Black Box Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.